clinical trials are the mechanism by which we develop new medical therapies. So it provides a really rigorous and safe framework for the development of new treatments. So the first step in developing a new treatment is to understand whether it's safe, what the side effects might be, what the appropriate dose is, and then of course if it's looking to be effective in the disease in question. These sorts of tests are conducted in so-called early phase or phase one and two clinical trials. And then once we know a drug is safe and effective, it's taken to the most rigorous stage of testing, the phase three clinical trial, where it's actually compared with the standard treatments available to see if it's perhaps more effective or safer than what we're currently using. Clinical trials are important across medicine, but they're particularly important for our blood cancer patients for a few reasons. Firstly, many of our blood cancers, unfortunately, are very difficult diseases to treat. And so the need for new therapies is great. Secondly, many of our individual blood cancers are quite rare on their own. And we really need large international collaborative clinical trials in order to be able to develop new treatments. And thirdly, really importantly, clinical trials may offer access to new therapies long before they're available for general use for our blood cancer patients. And I, I certainly have had many patients who've had life-saving therapies thanks to clinical trials. The new treatments target a very specific abnormality that occurs in about 20% of our AML patients. And it occurs as a result of a very specific gene mutation in the IDH gene, and thus IDH inhibitors. Now, these new drugs, IDH inhibitors, have already been tested in phase one and two clinical trials, and we know they're safe and effective. This trial is the phase three clinical trial where the new treatment is being tested against existing standard treatment to see if it's more effective or safer or bringing better outcomes for blood cancer patients with that specific abnormality. All patients on the trial will receive standard treatment, which is chemotherapy for AML or advanced stage MDS. And half of the patients will also receive the new treatment being tested, the IDH inhibitors, while the other half will receive a placebo or, or a dummy drug. And nobody will know which is which until the end of the trial, when the two groups will be compared to see if those who did receive the new treatment had better outcomes than those who did not. And by better outcomes, I mean better control of the disease itself and indeed better survival from the disease. Clinical trials, particularly in the blood cancers, require large numbers of patients, really necessitating global collaborations to be effective. And clinical trials are very expensive and labour intensive to run. It's only through programs and partnerships like the Trials Enabling Program with the Leukaemia Foundation that we are able to facilitate and indeed fund the really significant infrastructure required to participate in these sorts of trials. For Australian blood cancer patients, it's very important that we do participate in these international trials to provide them with the opportunity to perhaps potentially access these breakthrough new treatments that are being tested in the trial environment. Phase three clinical trial data where the new treatment is compared against the old is essential in taking a drug forward to the government bodies responsible for regulation and approval of drugs in order to have them approved. So if this trial is positive, in other words, if the new treatment looks to be more effective than the current standard, then this will lead to those regulatory bodies approving the drug and it becoming available for general use on the Australian market for that specific subset of patients. This is the final stage of being able to bring drugs to market in order to do that, we have to prove that there is a benefit in supplying these treatments. If the result of this trial is such that the new therapy proves more effective, then the new treatment will become the new standard treatment or the new so-called standard of care. So that is practice changing. 
And for patients diagnosed with these conditions into the future, five, possibly 10 years, we can see that these drugs will be approved for standard use, all patients will be screened for these mutations, and those who have the specific mutation will receive not only standard chemotherapy, but also the new very specific targeted agents addressing that specific abnormality caused by the mutation.